Well, hello there again. Future. Hello there, I'm Jim Balfour 4 and welcome to another hardware review. Today's hardware review is the Apple iMac 21.5 inch. Okay, well Apple have been in the industry for a long time. A lot longer than most companies anyway. However, their computer sales don't tend to be anywhere near as high as the other ones, maybe because they're kind of a premium product. Well, I finally got my hands on an iMac 21.5 inch display version, and it's an all-in-one system. Now, it features an Intel Core 2 Duo, so I like the fact they finally moved to Intel, and it can run Windows simultaneously with Mac OS X, or OS X, whatever you want to call it. Now, iMacs are good. However, the only however is the fact that the operating system doesn't really have as much potential, particularly for programming, as a Windows one would. You know, um, although it can run Windows this system, I still feel that a Windows computer runs it better, as in a PC would run it better if it was designed for it. Now we're going to actually have a look at how this device looks, and just a few of its features that make it really cool. Okay, well the structure of the iMac is quite nice. It's got a nice reflective screen as you can sure see me, you should be able to see me in it. It does get dusty quite easily at the screen. However, the, the rim, the black rim, is under a sheet of glass along with the screen itself here. We have a webcam and a microphone in the top. You can tilt the screen as well, which is a really, really good feature. However, the most annoying feature of it all is the fact that if sunlight hits it, it becomes really hard to see. On the right hand side of the Apple we have an SD card reader and slightly higher up a slot load DVD drive as you can see there. Okay well the cable management system is quite useful and our power connector is shaped nicely to go into the power connector on the computer. So it just goes in like so, and then slots in. In terms of connectivity, it's all grouped together with the headphone jack here, the line-in jack here, four USB 2 ports here, a Firewire 800, a display port, mini display port, and an Ethernet connector. Also note, Apple putting the power button on the back and removing convenience in place of style. It's really, really annoying if the computer's been off and you've got to turn it on because you've got to find the power button first. And that's particularly annoying for people who have never used it before. On the bottom we have a nice grill to keep the computer cool. And this is where the memory is hidden underneath. In terms of the keyboard and mouse, you get a very basic Bluetooth keyboard, which I really dislike. And it's made of aluminium, like that. And it's rather slim, with the power button here. And batteries going just here. Now it's an island style keyboard as you can see with every key being spaced from the next and it also has all the volume controls etc at the top and this I really dislike. You eject the DVD or CD from here. The mouse on the other hand is actually rather good. You scroll by just going up like that with your finger, left click, right click Although initially right click is disabled on the mouse and you have to press command or alt or something to do it. But they reinvented that and allowed you to right click by just setting it up like that. You can also zoom as you would in the iPhone, etc. By going like that. Because it's a multi-touch mouse. It's known as the Apple Magic Mouse. Okay, well the hardware specifications of it are an Intel Core 2 Duo, i5 or quad core, core 2 quad, it all depends on uh, which configuration you go for. You can get a NVIDIA 9400 or an ATI 4670, we went with the ATI, it was actually the better option as well. Um, we also got a 1TB drive as opposed to 500 which is in the base configuration. You get obviously the 4 USB ports and a firewire and the mouse and keyboard standard with them all. Um, 4 gigs of RAM in hours, but it's upgradable up to 16 gigabytes. And we also managed to uh, take out Apple Care plans, the Care Plan, to ensure it as well. Now, the one thing I really, really dislike with this computer is how hot it gets. If you leave this on for a long time, the Core 2 Duo manages to heat the aluminium case. 
the case gets so hot that if you touch it, it's you know you can seriously feel how hot it is, and it seems damage. It seems like it could damage the components. So as much as I like the computer, it looks really good. I still prefer the nice expandable computer that you can upgrade all the components, etc. And, and they're a lot cooler as well. Now, in terms of power usage, it used while it was working 120 watts, but this is not the full CPU usage. If it was up at 100%, it might use about 200 odd watts. But because the screen is LED backlit, etc., there are many, many power savings to be made. My desktop computer, which runs on a Core 2 Quad, etc., at its maximum peak performance uses 300 watts, but the majority of the time it only uses 150. So, for me, this is, I mean, this computer is it's quite good for its performance, but nowhere near as good as mine. And also what I dislike is the fact that it does not feature a Blu-ray drive. Now, Blu-ray ROMs are becoming more and more popular in computers, even now I have one. And uh, I would say, to be particularly honest, this is a missing feature that's quite important. The SD card reader is a bit basic as well. It doesn't support XD, MMC, MS. It only supports SD, perhaps because Apple have a grudge against Sony. For all we know, that could be the reason. Now, also, according to Windows, which I've installed and dual booted with it, the graphics card in it is not so much an ATI 4670, but a Mobility 4670, which to me seems a bit weird. It has 256 megabytes of graphics memory, so it could be a possibility, considering I've seen the majority of these with a gigabyte, and I've never seen 256 megabyte desktop version, so it could be a mobility graphics card. What I did like as well was the fact that they featured a display port, which can turn into HDMI, VGA, or DVI through the use of an adapter. Or, of course, you can just leave it as a display port. But display port's not very popular. Some monitors such as mine here do feature it, though. So what would I rate the Apple Mac, the iMac, out of 10? Well, I would probably give it 8 out of 10 for the simple fact that it only features an SD card reader, no Blu-ray ROM, <coughs> and the fact that it's quite easy to scratch as well. Something that I, I dislike about the screen is the fact that when we got ours, there was already a chip in the screen, so it loses a few pixels automatically. So thanks for watching this video. And please keep the questions coming. Subscribe, comment, rate, whatever you want to do. Thanks for watching my YouTube video.